The Frog Prince's Quest Chapter 1 The Encounter Max was playing in his backyard one sunny afternoon, exploring the corners of his little world, when he stumbled upon a small, brightly colored frog. The frog had vibrant green and blue hues, unlike any other frog Max had seen before. Its skin shimmered in the sunlight, catching Max's eye immediately. Intrigued, Max crouched down, his curiosity piqued. He extended a finger toward the frog, hoping to get a closer look. To his astonishment, the frog spoke. Hello, young one. I am Freddy, a prince trapped in this form by a wicked enchantment, the frog croaked in a surprisingly regal voice. Max blinked in surprise, his mouth falling open. A talking frog? A prince? How did this happen, he stammered, his mind racing with questions. Freddy explained with a sorrowful tone, many years ago, a jealous sorceress cast a spell on me, transforming me into a frog. To break the spell, I need a special potion, but I can't gather the ingredients on my own. Will you help me, Max? Despite his initial skepticism, Max's sense of adventure was piqued. The idea of helping a prince in disguise was too thrilling to pass up. All right, Freddy. I'll help you. What do we need to do? Max agreed, feeling a rush of excitement. Freddy hopped closer, his eyes gleaming with hope. We need to find three magical ingredients hidden in this very backyard. The first is a petal from the golden sunflowers, the second is a drop of dew from the ancient oak tree, and the third is a crystal hidden under the largest rock in the garden. Max nodded determinately, his adventurous spirit ignited. Let's get started, he declared, ready to embark on this unexpected quest. With a newfound sense of purpose, Max and Freddy set off into the backyard, unaware of the challenges and wonders that awaited them on their magical journey. Chapter 2 The Golden Petal The sunflower patch, a cheerful area of the garden where the tall blooms gently swung in the breeze, was Max and Freddy's first stop. Their sun-facing bright yellow faces created a sea of gold tones. Max rushed for the closest flower, eager to find the miraculous petal. But Freddy gave a start, croaking urgently to stop him in his tracks. Max, hold on. The petal that we require has a golden sheen to it. We have to pick the proper one, Freddy said in a serious tone. Max nodded, understanding the importance of their task. They began their search, moving methodically through the sunflower patch. Each flower was carefully examined, but none seemed to have the golden glow Freddy had described. Time seemed to stretch on endlessly as they continued their quest, the sun climbing higher in the sky. Just as Max was beginning to feel discouraged, a faint golden glow caught his eye. He followed the light to one particular sunflower, standing taller and prouder than the rest. The glow was subtle, but unmistakable. Max's heart raced with excitement as he gently reached out and plucked a single petal from the glowing flower. Got it! Max exclaimed, holding the petal up triumphantly. The golden light seemed to dance in the sunlight, casting a warm glow on his face. Freddy nodded approvingly, his eyes gleaming with satisfaction. Well done, Max. This is exactly what we need. Now, onto the ancient oak tree. With the first ingredient in hand, 
Max and Freddy set off towards the towering oak tree at the far end of the garden, ready to face the next challenge in their magical quest. Chapter 3 The Dew Drop The ancient oak tree stood at the far end of the yard, its gnarled branches stretching majestically toward the sky. Max had always been fascinated by this tree with its thick trunk and sprawling roots that seemed to hold secrets of the past. The tree was a giant among the other plants in the garden, a silent guardian of the yard. As they approached, Freddy hopped onto one of the massive roots and looked up at Max with determination. We need to climb to the highest branch to collect the dew drop, Freddy instructed, his eyes scanning the towering branches above them. Max gulped, feeling a twinge of apprehension. The tree was incredibly tall, and he had never attempted such a climb before. But the thought of helping Freddy broke the spell steeled his resolve. He took a deep breath, his small hands gripping the rough bark. Carefully, he began his ascent, finding footholds and handholds along the way. Freddy watched from below, his croaky voice offering words of encouragement. You're doing great, Max. Just a little further. Higher and higher Max climbed, the ground growing distant beneath him. The branches became thinner and more flexible, swaying slightly under his weight. Finally, he reached the highest branch that could support him. There, glistening in the sunlight, was a single dew drop, shining like a tiny diamond. Max held his breath, the moment feeling almost sacred. He carefully reached out, his fingers trembling slightly, and gently collected the drop in a small vial he had brought along. The dew drop sparkled in the vial, pure and perfect. Got it, Freddy. Max called down, his voice filled with excitement and relief. Freddy cheered from below, his eyes shining with pride. Great job, Max. Now, we just need the crystal under the rock. With a sense of accomplishment, Max began his descent, the precious dewdrop safely tucked away. He felt more confident now, ready to tackle the final challenge of their magical quest. Chapter 4 The Hidden Crystal Max climbed down the oak tree, the dew drop secure in his pocket, and they made their way to the largest rock in the garden. This massive stone, partially buried in the ground, had always intrigued Max. Now, it held the final piece of their magical quest. Max and Freddy examined the rock, searching for any sign of the hidden crystal. Freddy hopped closer to the rock, his eyes keenly scanning the surface. There's a secret to moving this rock, he explained. Look for a symbol carved into it. Max nodded and began to carefully inspect the rock's surface. After a few moments, his fingers brushed against a small, intricately carved symbol resembling a star. It was almost invisible, blending seamlessly with the stone's natural texture. Heart pounding with excitement, Max pressed on the star-shaped symbol. With a low rumble, the rock shifted slightly, revealing a hidden compartment beneath it. Inside, nestled in the dirt, lay a small, shimmering crystal. It sparkled with an otherworldly light, casting tiny rainbows on the ground around it. Max carefully picked up the crystal, feeling a profound sense of accomplishment wash over him. We did it, Freddy. We have all the ingredients. Freddy hopped excitedly, his eyes gleaming with joy. Now, we need to mix them together and complete the potion. Let's head back to the garden shed. 
With the golden petal, the dew drop, and the crystal in hand, Max and Freddy hurried to the garden shed. Inside, Freddy guided Max through the intricate process of combining the ingredients. Max followed Freddy's instructions meticulously, stirring and mixing until the potion glowed with a magical light. As Max poured the final mixture into a small vial, a brilliant light filled the shed. A sudden rush of wind swirled around them, lifting leaves and dust into the air. Max shielded his eyes, feeling the magic pulse around him. When the light faded and the wind settled, Freddy was no longer a frog. Before Max stood a tall, handsome prince, his eyes the same vibrant green and blue hues as the frog he had once been. Thank you, Max, the prince said with a warm smile. You have broken the spell and freed me. I am forever in your debt. Max grinned, his heart swelling with pride. I'm glad I could help, Freddy. Or should I say, your highness? Freddy laughed, a sound full of joy and relief. Freddy is just fine. Now, let's go tell everyone about our adventure. And with that, Max and Freddy, the prince, stepped out into the sunlight, ready to share their incredible story with the world.